Hello, Rick here and today we're taking a look at the Systems Alliance, the human founded organisation and how it is perceived by the other races of the Mass Effect universe. For many aliens, the Systems Alliance is the face of humanity in one way or another and as such, its members are to set an example for the species. Although in truth, humanity is far more widespread than those who simply wear the naval uniforms or the diplomats encountered on the Presidium of the Citadel. A vast majority of humans are in fact to be found spread across numerous planets, trailblazing colony worlds and establishing footholds across numerous systems. The first and most obvious observation most species make of humanity is its diversity, and I don't just mean in skin tones, height, weight, hair colour and so on, but in the sheer number of personality traits on display from paragon virtues of diplomacy to renegade actions of violence. One never quite knows what to expect from a human, and this can be daunting. But why does humanity defy simple categorisation like many other species? Well, let's have a quick rundown of their history as a spacefaring species and perhaps the answer will become apparent. Despite common misconception, the governmental body of the humans is not solely the Alliance. The many governments of Earth are still present in the year 2149, but many have unified into the Union of Incorporated Nations. The Alliance itself was a joint funded space exploration venture whose mission statement was to colonise the solar system and develop means to harvest the resources within. Consumed with their own issues on Earth, the system's alliance was more of an afterthought of most nations until the discovery of the buried Prothean data cache on Mars. This data cache, like many others discovered by the myriad of species throughout the galaxy, held within information on faster than light travel medical advances, new technologies, and the two most important discoveries, the Mass Effect Phenomena and the Karen Mass Relay. This discovery brought proof beyond any doubt that humanity was not alone in the universe, and suddenly they had even more reason to expand, and now more importantly the means to do so. Over a period of years, most religious institutions had to incorporate this new evidence into their doctrine, or were dissolved. Among the many that continued were Catholicism and Buddhism, the later even gaining interest amongst other species. The first race humans encountered were the Turians, as human pioneers attempted to activate a dormant mass relay. Unbeknownst to the humans, this action is illegal in Citadel space, and they had indeed trespassed into Citadel space. The cautionary tale of activating mass relays is best summarised by the Rachni Wars, where a Citadel expedition, just as humanity was doing now, attempted to investigate a new relay and found an aggressive race of insect life on the other side. The Turians fought off the humans from the relay and then occupied the colony world of Shangxi. This was the first contact war of 2157. That occupation did not last long as the system's alliance retaliated quickly and drove the Turians back. From the Turians' point of view, they were attempting to placate a potentially invasive species that had already established footholds in Citadel space. After being driven back, the Turians began to take this new species seriously by preparing for war. It was then that the Greater Galactic Community took note and stepped in, placating the Turians and introducing humanity to the Citadel races. However, the fact that humanity's first contact was affixed with the word war would prove a looming anchor for the species. Although the Turian conflict with humanity had been brief, it had marked them as a serious threat. This in turn though served as a mark of begrudging respect, although much resentment would still reside on both sides. Other species eyed the newcomers with caution, after all these humans had been caught performing illegal actions before squaring off against the strongest military in the galaxy, in what must have seemed a colossally reckless move. Add to that the fact that humanity had gone from one solar system to dozens in only nine years, and many species first opinion of the race was that it was a lot of foolhardy upstarts who would inevitably collapse under their own ambition. Not the best first impression to make, but it did establish the notion that humanity was not going to take no for an answer. In 2165, humans were granted an embassy on the Citadel, the galactic hub for interspecies culture. This put them on the same footing, it seemed, as species such as the Volus, Elcor and Batarians, who themselves had established diplomatic presences on the Citadel long before humans were even on the scene. You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Din. 
You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the Council has granted you great favour. Being the outermost representatives of Earth and her colonies, the Systems Alliance was chosen as the face of humanity and its ambassador would be the one to rub shoulders with the assembled intergalactic community. Many humans of entrepreneurial spirit moved to the Citadel and private organisations began establishing lines of commerce with the more trade-minded species. These sorts of interactions further added to the collage of human interaction among the Council races, but for every positive outlook, a negative one could be formulated. Well, humans are very intelligent. Or are they just schemers? They're so reckless, look at how they toyed with that relay. Well, perhaps they're simply curious, what's wrong with that? Well, the species has got so many colonies already, they must be so adaptable. Or perhaps they're just invasive. Well, they're varied, yes, but that makes them unpredictable. Though, of course, unease was reflected on the human side, too. Many organisations, such as Terra Firma and the underground Cerberus, began to gain support from humans who mistrusted alien cultures, or humans who agreed with the sentiment that they were expanding too fast. Many point to these sort of human-first movements as proof that the species has an inherent danger, but it would be prudent to point out that the face humanity tries to present is one of peace, and that intent must count for something. Throughout the 2160s, humanity began colonising the Scillian Verge and encountered opposition from the Batarians, who were also attempting to establish a foothold. By this time, humanity had become a common sight even in alien homeworlds, as they continued to try to establish ties. Many human businesses were already deeply involved in interstellar commerce, as the shared Prothean origin of most technology allowed for a surprising ease of compatibility with innovations. The reverse was not so common though, aliens were seldom seen on human-occupied worlds, perhaps due to the lingering uncertainty many felt about the newest species. The Batarian hegemony never openly declared war on the system's alliance over the Scillian Verge, but after the Council denied their petition to have exclusive colonisation rights, in 2171 they withdrew their embassy, renounced the Citadel and began funnelling organised crime operations into the Verge to interfere with human interests. Batarian propaganda painted the Council's decision as favouritism and they did much to spread this notion, enough that many others listened. It must be said in the humans' defence, however, that the Council did not declare the Verge an area of Batarian interests, but neither did they declare it of human interests. Many simply blamed the Batarians for raising a ruckus, but the lingering effect here was that the Batarians would forevermore mistrust and downright resent humanity on principle. Many other species too thought this was another sign of humans' perseverance, for good or ill. They truly were here to stay, but they were earning quite the reputation as being at the centre of a lot of trouble. At this time, the Systems Alliance had only been part of the galactic community for 14 years. I guess I don't really need to explain human physical traits to you, but one feature of note is that over time, recessive traits such as blonde hair and blue eyes continue to increase in rarity, although many humans colour their hair or undergo genetic alteration to mimic these uncommon traits. Yes, in human culture, gene therapy is commonplace for medical and militaristic purposes. Human life expectancy is around 150 years, and many have no reservations about installing cybernetic augmentations for a practical purpose. Like most other species, they have their rare individuals known as biotics, manipulators of dark energy, and although their power is limited when compared with other citadel races, as with every other area of human technology, innovation continues at an accelerated pace. Humans physically are about as strong as a Turian but more agile, slower than a Salarian or a Drell, although more hardy. The human governmental structure consists of the UNIN, the nations of Earth working in partnership with the Systems Alliance. The Alliance in turn oversees the military and exploratory arms of humanity's galactic presence. Although the human military is proportionally the smallest of many species, making up only 3% of enlisted individuals. Human colonies each have their own governing body, which the Alliance allows to operate with a great degree of autonomy which, like all things human, means that their social constructs end up quite varied. As of late 2183, humanity gained a seat on the Council, making it the fourth race to do so, and marked the next stage of increasing relevance. 
though their relative newness still means that their voice in the galactic community carries little weight, even if their actions do. This feat was hard earned and came off the back of a great deal of respect and sacrifice. Many species took it as further proof of humanity's invasiveness and a weakening of the Citadel Council. However, many also understood the influential role that humanity had come to play in the galactic landscape, especially as the system's alliance had no strong ties to any one race in particular to leverage power. This has affirmed the belief that humanity, when offered an inch, will take a mile, or more optimistically, humanity will always seek to achieve a higher tier of power, technology, happiness, whatever. If it's there, humanity will choose to tackle it, and this approach to constant self-improvement is contagious, and as it seems many other species have begun to exhibit human traits and idioms. But after all, that is what the Citadel was established for, so that the many species could learn from one another and grow as a collective, and the inclusion of humanity and the system's alliance into this smelting pot in the long run will prove advantageous to all its inhabitants. Those who have visited Earth often see the potential that humanity can offer, and Earth is regarded as a good example of a paradise world akin to the Asari zone Thessia. Optimists regard humanity as being on the right path, albeit travelling a lot quicker than one would expect. Overall, many species reserve judgement on meeting a human individual, despite hearsay as they honestly don't know what to expect. The species is ambitious in its reach, flexible in its military tactics, variable in innovation and diverse as a people. This variation comes from the fact that humanity is the youngest interstellar power and still in the process of growth. Although it identifies as humanity over individual cultures, it's still trying to find its place amongst the stars. Thanks for listening to this index. I tried to approach this one from a different angle, seeing what the other races of the Mass Effect universe thought of the humans, and the Alliance in particular as its face. I know I missed a lot of details, but I love talking Mass Effect, so no doubt I'll revisit the series sometime again soon. And until then, the next index as usual is a voted one of either the Star Wars Togruta, or another from the Mass Effect smelting pot, the Drell. Like the appropriate comment to cast your vote, uh, even though I've noticed that a number of the likes don't always display, they still register eventually. So, thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye